Hello everybody, so today we're going to continue on our basic watercolour exercises and we're going to do a basic, uh, almost like batik design similar to the squiggle exercise we did previously which is more abstract. So imagine you're designing a tea towel or a, uh, a scarf or something like that. So I've just done this sketch, I hope you can see it, in pencil of um, a bowl of fruit and some fruit around the edge so I've given myself a border for more to do, why not? And um, I've drawn out uh, a sort of almost cartoonish version of a fruit bowl here with some various fruit and a pineapple and I'm going to exploit the colour wheel to make it really pop. Um, I have some examples here I've been noodling around with just for fun really and I've been using a colour wheel, I've been using my fancy colour wheel uh, as you can see here, so seeing what colours are opposite and then trying to exploit the difference between them. I'll just go through a few I've already done. So here we have a quite a spectacular one. Uh, this is uh, just a seahorse under the sea with some fish. And what I've done, I've tried to use the blue and orange ping that you get. And you can see that actually this is the best blue to ping that orange. It just leaps out of the page at you. So it's just a simple design cartoonish almost in its way, leaving this uh, little edge here um, so the colours don't run to, into each other and that's what gives it the petite kind of idea. And um, it's just fun to do, it's colouring in but with watercolours. But if you do something like this, you don't have to go crazy and do something as elaborate as this, um, you can uh, just get in practice of putting on washes. And one way of dealing with watercolour is to paint little cells. So I've got little cells along here, so you're not worrying about painting a large wash. But just to familiarise yourself about how watercolours work and how colour works as well. So I have another one here, <coughs> it's just a little sunflower, but you can see it's very effective because I've got yellow and purple, so it looks rather groovy. Um, and so, so I've just used variations of yellows and variation of purple, and that's quite an easy one to do. And it's just very simple, but it's enjoyable to do, and you can actually improve your skills while you're doing it. Uh, I've got another one here, uh, just moving around in my um, sketchbook of fuchsias, which I think is quite successful. And because it's my sketchbook, I wasn't worrying about being too neat. But you can see how those pinks uh, pop against this green. So um, I actually used the colour wheel to find the colour of my fuchsia, and then I was looking over here, so the opposite of that is this yellow-green, but then I wanted some darker greens in there too, just to bring the fuchsias out. So um, you can do anything, really. I think that's all I've got. Um, I've got a, another one where I thought I'd redo the fuchsias, but I don't think that's as groovy because the uh, the greens are lighter and the pink is darker, so I think the other one worked much better. So um, I'm just going to start painting, just to remind you of how things work. So here we have my cartoonish picture of a bowl of fruit. To draw the pineapple, actually, this is very good if anybody ever gives you a pineapple to draw, just draw the lines because they have, uh, I think they respond to the Fibonacci series uh, <coughs> of like pine cones and things, so you get these lines, so you can just draw them like that and draw them like that and then just fill in the little uh, orange squares there. So I'm just going to start taking up uh, some colours, I'm using uh, my Russian watercolours mainly because they have a nice range of colours, um, I've got some Van Goghs um, as well, lurking in the background. This is my bigger set of Van Goghs. And I've got some nice blues. I've been going through my watercolours to see what I can find. And I've mixed up some uh, bright colours. As you can probably recognise, this was from uh, the previous uh, colour wheel exercise we did. So, uh, so I've got my water, I've got my kitchen towel, and we're just going to start painting. This might be like watching paint dry. What I might do, actually, is paint a few bits and then see if I can hyperlapse it. But we'll see how it goes. So I'm just going to remind you of how to paint these little cells. So here I've got a lemon. And as I say, lemons uh, are yellow. is very, very prone to being mucky. So I'm just going to go in here. I'm just going to take the excess of that water off. I've got a nice size 7. This is a synthetic proline brush. And I'm just going to paint me lemon. Paint, 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 paint paint me lemon. Oh, actually, I've got some other lemons lurking around. Maybe I'll paint those while I'm at it. 
Um, <coughs> so I'm just going to pick up some lemon yellow. And I've got another lemon up there. So I'm just going to go, just paint that shape. So again, just go around the edge and bring it all together. Um, and I have another lemon over here. Let's do that lemon. And go around the edge. And you can see I'm more or less keeping my brush on the paper all the time. Do I have another lemon? Oh, yes, I've got one down here. Let's get that lemon yellow going. Lemon yellow for lemons. And here we go. Just painting around the edge and keeping the brush on the paper. Um, so you're painting nice little bits of discrete colour and um, you can go on and add more uh, different kinds of fruits. So I've got a nice red here, so I've got a strawberry. I'm just going to take a little bit of that paint off, go around the edge of me strawberry with the cat hair. There we go. Uh, the cat drinks my paint water, so there's always cat hair on my... Um, Yes, you. <laughs> uh, on my um, uh, watercolours, which is kind of annoying. Oops, I'm bashing the camera. Okay, we go around there, around there. Try not to bash the camera. That's a more intense red. And I've got another strawberry over here, around the edge. Oops, I should take a little bit of the paint off. And. So with watercolour, what it's about is controlling water. So there's a lot of uh, wash on here now. So I can just move that wash around with my brush, paint the edge, and then bring it all together. It's one way of avoiding stripes and streaks and things like that. So we're getting nice vivid strawberries there. Um, <clears throat> and I've got another one over here. Uh, and with another cat hair. So I'm just going around the edge here. And uh, I'll go on like this, filling all the uh, fruit in. But I just want to show you, um, uh, my plan is to have, so I've got orange here, and my favourite colour is blue, so I'm going to use a lot of blue. And what I've done here in the background is actually mosaic it. So I've made up sort of a random sh sort of square type shapes and um, then I can paint little cells of colour. Uh, but what I will show you is my big plan and why it works quite well with uh, watercolour uh, and these lines is that I can paint my orange. That's a bit of feeble orange. So paint me orange, which is just a circle really. So there we go, an orange. And then I'm going to pick up some blue. Um, so I've got a nice blue here. Whoa, that's a bit... Um, strong so I'm just going to see what color that is that's probably okay and then I'm going to go around the edge here just paint that little cell of color and I'm going to be very careful because I know my orange is still wet obviously you sensible person would let it dry but I just want to show you why we're leaving that little white line just in case you get enthusiastic and paint one wash too close to another wash and then I'm coming up to I'll do the centre because uh, watch, watching me paint all this will be terribly tedious. And so we're getting that idea of this nice zing of the orange against the blue. <coughs> so I'm basically going to do just a whole bunch of blues. So in the central section, I've got my pineapple. I'm just going to grab a bit more orange. Which I got glue on my brush, so it's made it dirty, so I have to clean it. Let's get some orange going. There we go, all that orange. And I'm going to paint my pineapple. So I'm just going to go in here and paint that little square, little diamond. And you see, going around the edge and then doing next, and then I'll do it again and again. So I don't know if this exercise would appeal to you, but if you just want a nice mindful uh, exercise, this is a great way to do it, and it's a great way to um, understand how watercolours work. Um, so I will paint the rest of the pineapple eventually. Ah, and now I have a pear. Shall we do a pear in green? Woo. Let's do a pear in green. So I'm just going to go paint around the edge of this pear. 
it's a bigger shape as you can see so paint around the edge of that pair pick up my wash and again having that good puddle of wash mixed up already so you can just go back and grab it when you need it and then you'll avoid the problem with your paint drying creating lines and streaks that you don't want so I'm just pulling the wash backwards and forwards and I'm probably going to leave it at that <clears throat> and uh, even though it does look a little bit blotchy it'll be fine because the water will sort most of the things out um, and then I could paint another orange I suppose we call it an apple let's call it an apple so I'm going to have a nice red apple here and I've got a nice bright cadmium red here so I'm painting the apple I might have a little gleam left on it and my puddle of wash is running out so there we go I'm just going to paint that and then uh, I just want to show you what I'm going to do about the background so I've got a um, a bowl of fruit here and we got a nice color hang on a minute what did I do with that color it's here somewhere so I've got a nice blue here and mix it in with that blue and then I'm going to mosaic up the background so I'm just going to have variations of blue so I've got a little square here so you're not painting one great big wash we'll come to that when we do uh, the landscapes next week of how to paint large areas of wash but just get used to painting small areas of wash of how watercolor works and then I'm going to pick up a different kind of blue is that different that's darker anyway and I can go in here and again paint a little almost like um, it was sitting on a mosaic table or something so I'm going to stop that there and go backwards and forwards and just bring that wash backwards and forwards I have some French ultramarine here somewhere but I wonder where it's gone oh that's a different blue so I can go in here whoa that's indrathene blue which is very dark if you can see it. Um, so I've got a lot going on there but because I put a lot of wash on the on the paper I can actually use that and drag it around with my brush I'm just going in here and there so I'm just going to have variations of blue behind my nice bright fruit and I'm going to go on and paint um, a banana let's paint a banana so I'm just going to use an ordinary yellow whoa that's a lot of yellow a nice yellow whoa and I've got a banana paint that banana in that lovely yellow there we go and I'm going to continue on painting this um, and hopefully I will be able to speed it up but um, try it out for yourselves it's a lovely fun exercise to do and it's just nice messing around with these beautiful colors so I'm going to keep painting and probably not talk very much um, and then we hopefully we can speed it up like Benny Hill eventually um, I don't know if that's possible but let's go on and now I've got a bowl here so I'm going to perhaps make that purple Ooh, let's have some purple going on get my purple going here we go <clears throat> uh, so I'm going to paint Ooh, now I'm thinking about that I'm going to need some more purple it's quite a large area and maybe a bigger brush bigger brush so this is a size 7 and this is just a size 8 but it is bigger and it is disabled so I'm just going to grab that and I'm going to paint this little bit here Ooh, look a finger print um, so I'm just going to paint that and it's been more intense let's get some more paint going on and I'm just going to go around the edge and you can see with a big brush you can cover a lot of area as long as it's got a good point and you can see as the while the water is still wet you can do quite a lot with it I might take that down and go around the corner there we go it's just starting to dry just now okay um, 
around so I'm just going to drag that off and when I've got a big blob like that what you can do I'm just going to dry my brush and then lift that off but don't fiddle with water so I'm just going to leave it alone now and <coughs> hopefully at the end of the process you'll end up with something like this um, this has got been through the wars a bit but you can see that you're getting that nice zing I made the mistake of not breaking up this area into different uh, sections so actually it was quite hard to do that large wash but you can see you get quite a nice design I'm exploiting the um, blue yellow ping uh, <coughs> sorry blue orange ping in this one so you're getting that real zing out of the colors so I'm going to keep painting and then um, hopefully we can speed it up for you it could take a while though now I've got two pots of water just here so um, I've always got one clean I hope that's my plan I'm just going to grab some orange and paint. Oh no, I want the dirty brush. I want a smaller brush for this. And <clears throat> you pick up my orange and I'm going to paint me pineapple. Paint, paint, paint. Oops. That is dry now, so I'm just going to go in there and paint my little diamonds. My pineapple. There we go. Oops. Ah. one there so I'm trying to leave that little white line oops too much water on my brush right and usually I do paint watercolor standing up but this is quite an intricate exercise and I think I would prefer to paint it sitting down Is, I hope you're getting the feeling of a pineapple. I hope there we go, and another little diamond there. And I might slim down the pineapple, there's an idea. we go ah. and now that's gone out so I can bring that one out too and we're getting a little diamond just there and <coughs> again a little bit too much wash triangle of the pineapple oh damn I should have done the apple there meanwhile I'm just going to put an orange in starting with the lighter colors first uh, maybe I should put the orange in here intense to differentiate it from the pineapple ah. and there we go it's leaving those little lines in between and maybe I will 
turn this into a plum. Mm, I think I need more red in that. There we are, nice plummy colour. That's a nice plummy colour. So that's a mixture of just basic purple and something resembling magenta. So we're just getting this idea of that you don't have to reproduce reality all the time. Bringing design into your work, which I'm quite a big fan of, it helps with composition and various other things. And I think I need another banana. So I'm just going to go in here, oops, and pop in another banana. And there we go. Ugh. A banana. Maybe I'll edit out the stalk of the apple. And then, what did I do with my French up to green? Ah, oh, there it is. I've forgotten what I did with it. So I'm just going to paint another little square here, a slightly different blue. Dilute that down a bit. Um, and have another one up here. So it's a slightly different blue. See, I'm using the brush to actually create the shape. And then, eek, this comes into Chinese brush painting as well. And there we go. Whoa, spiky leaves on a pineapple. <coughs> so some shapes are more complicated, but sometimes you can use the brush to really help shapes and I really wish I hadn't put that orange in the middle but what can you do so let's keep painting with the blues so let's see what we got here yeah so that's a kind of slightly warmer blue oops there we go and actually I think there's a little bit too much wash on there so I'm just going to use a clean dry brush to lift some of that off and I got a little blob lift that off and bring it backwards and forwards but just try not to fiddle too much when you're applying watercolors so this is almost like doing a jigsaw and often watercolors will turn into almost doing a jigsaw what color that is whoa fantastic uh, so I'm going to take a little bit of this colour, I'm going to put it here, and you can see this brush has got a good point so I should be able to be reasonably accurate, and then I'm going to dilute that down a bit, so I get a slightly different colour. Painting and painting and painting. Oops, I 
Ha, 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 And then I think I have a little bit more ultramarine somewhere. Let's have it over here. So this is a bit paler, but you can vary the tones, as I hope you found out with uh, the original lesson about um, getting to know your paint box of just di lightening watercolor just by adding water. If you add white paint you lose this lovely glow that water ha colours have. And I hope you can see it's coming together. Um, so more blues, more blues. Let's have a look at this blue. I wonder what colour that is. No, the same as that one. E. Ooh, let's go to that one again. I like that one. This is um, Indrathene blue, it's called. It's a very cool blue. It's not quite as vicious as Prussian and it's a little bit cooler. What is that Prussian? I wonder. And then I'm going to take a bit of yellow, seeing that I put purple on here, and I'm just going to pop it in here. And I don't know if you found with your squiggle exercise, whoops, that uh, that you just immediately find, oh no, I put the wrong colour there. But don't worry, do another squiggle exercise. There we go. Oops, that's a bit feeble, so I'm just going to go back there and drop a little bit more colour in. And maybe I'll use that plum colour. Ooh. Why not? Oops, hair. And I'm just coming down here. Ooh, and I've got another purple. And you have to be quite quick sometimes, but make sure you've got that wash all mixed up and ready to go. And then I suppose I better do another yellow one. Right? Yeah, 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 why not? Let's do another yellow one. Ooh. I'm really going for colour theory here with knobs on. Okay. Um, and I've no idea what this is going to turn out like, but I had a vision. It seems to be working mainly, I hope. Got a pale French ultramarine there. I want it to be a bit paler, so I'm taking a bit off my brush. Yeah. There we go. And I think we need a different colour over here. Uh, and I might. Let's put this one on quite dark and just catch the edge of the bowl, the edge of that, the edge of this, the edge of that. Whoops. Damn. Uh, well, I think I might go all the way down. Why not? To that area there. And then. I've got these nice, uh, these are called Shevington Blues, which I'm particularly fond of. I'm just going to try a little bit over here. Whoa, that's too much water. So just take some off. You're getting that real ping of this nice turquoise. And again, I've got a blob, so I'm just going to lift that off with the brush. The water goes back into the brush, I think, by capillary reaction. Um, and then a different kind of blue. What other kind of blue can we have? Let's water that one down a lot, I think, and see what it comes out like. Yeah, that'll do. Um, so I'm coming over here. We've got a nice pale version of that. So I'm hoping all these blues will go together eventually. Coming up to my bananas. 
And then, ooh, I think I need to deepen that bit up. Just there. And let's have a bit of that over here. Oh, look, I've got a pear stalk. Ah, that's entirely too much wash. I want to have a pear stalk. Excess off my brush. There we are. And then I'm going to grab some more of this. Why not? Because I love it. Just go in there like that. saying in the other videos that you can do a lot while a watercolour wash is wet and I'm just thinking I might put another orange in here why not because that is a little bit of white space that's annoying me ah. and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn this upside down and I'm going to paint this area just so I'm not reaching far to grab the colours that I want to need. Um, try that colour. Yeah, can't find a way to put it. Ooh, that's that's my Indra theme. So here, for instance, I want another one of these. And I'm just painting the pencil lines I made and then I will leave that little white gap between. Um, what colour was it? That one. And then perhaps another one over here. I think is required <clears throat> like here Ooh. quite a big shape so I'm painting like the clappers and I got my wash mixed up so hopefully it will all be all right so it's just very good practice just for learning how to put on color and and learning how color reacts with itself with each other French Arch Marine, I think. So I'm just taking a little bit off, painting in between me spiky leaves. And I want that to go there, this to go here. So as you can see, as it goes on, it's getting paler. But paler is good. I'll have to just take off that little last blob with a clean dry brush, rather a dry brush. Um, let's try that one. Ooh, I think that is Prussian blue. Prussian blue is a terrible bully, but it is a lovely colour. And the history of Prussian blue is very fascinating. I'll try French ultramarine and a little bit of that and see what happens. So again just painting that there. And then I'm going to pick up this, pop it in there, and I'm going to pick up some, oh, I 
it's the same colour. Let's see what colour that is. Ooh, swimming pool colour. Mm, maybe I'll put it in here. These blues are getting quite similar, so I'm going to see if I can mix up something a little bit more interesting. So if I take my deep blue and my French ultramarine together, see what they make. It's quite a nice, reasonable blue. Water it down a lot and pop it in here. So that's very similar to that one, but never mind. Now you can see I'm just going to uh, drag that wash around, drag it with me, make it up here, and go. spiky and I can do that because the wash is still wet and maybe use the same thing again for over here oops I've got the window open and the wind's coming up there we go and I think I might use it over here Spiky. Ah! And over here, maybe a little bit more French up in there. And maybe one here. Ah! Entirely too much water. wet and then banging the camera with my glasses <coughs> okay so I've just damn I've just got one more to paint no yeah, maybe not <coughs> let's just take it all the way across I don't mind so much So there you are. So I will stop now because it will be like watching paint dry. And I will finish this off and then post the picture to Judy and you can see what it looks like. But it's just simple, fun exercise in watercolour and colour, which is always very exciting. Okay. Hello again. So here we are. Here's the finished article. It's just a quickie, but again, a quite an enjoyable, mindful exercise. I uh, do have the other uh, look at the other ones that I hope Judy will be posting um, on Twitter or online just to give you different ideas. You can take any subject you like um, and just have fun with it. You don't have to do this elaborate border and you can just enjoy painting. You don't have to paint on a big scale. You can do it in a sketchbook, but just enjoy it. And also that you learn how to use watercolor as well. Okay, and I'll see you next week for Landscapes.